participants and the public hearing organized by our independent evaluation commission who are assessing the integrity of candidates for the position of a member in the self administration by its objectives and prosecutors, pursuant to the law number 26, stroke 20, uh, 2022. Uh, let me start by wishing to thank the National Institute of Justice, uh, since this is the first hearing that we have, for their cooperation and for allowing their premises to have uh, the hearings that we undertake. As a matter of more of organization of things, I see a number of you are wearing masks. Uh, it is a recommendation, of course, for people to wear masks. It's not obligatory, so that point can be signed, but I see so that a number of people are wearing masks. I hear that declare this session open, and this hearing involves the evaluation of Mrs. Livia Mitrova. Welcome, and uh, Judge Edna, who was a candidate for the Superior Council of Magistracy. I would like to welcome you, Mrs. Mitrova. I will start by explaining why this commission is here, and I will introduce you to those addressing in this room. We are here to conduct a public hearing in the context of the evaluation process aimed at assessing the judicial candidates for the position of the Superior Council of Magistracy. The Commission is acting in accordance with Rule Number 26, 2022, and I quote, on certain measures relating to the selection of candidates for position of member in the self administration bodies of judges and prosecutors. And in accordance with the rules of procedure and the evaluation rules of the Commission, which have been adopted by the Commission pursuant to the provisions of this law. In front of you, you have the six members of the Commission in alphabetical order Victoria Henry, over there, the best out of the Vicky over there, and Vitaly and myself, and as chair of the Commission. The Commission is furthermore assisted by some members of the Secretariat who will sit here behind us, and behind you, there are the assemblies of the media and the public. Also present today, as you can see, is a photographer who will be taking photographs at the opening of this hearing for a maximum of a few minutes and before we go into our work. We are pleased to have members of the public and representatives of the media present at this hearing as well. For those in attendance, please be advised of the following rules during the hearing. The first one is that particles from our photographer do not make it to take photographs. Members of the media can arrange to obtain copies of photographs taken by this photographer. You are not permitted to record the hearings. The proceedings are being recorded by the Commission and will be available online as soon as possible after the hearing via the website of the Commission. And the website is www.fetting.mb. We ask you also to remain silent during the hearing and we ask you, as I indicated already, to respect all the regulations. Throughout the hearing, the members of the Commission will remain seated and also the candidate is invited to remain seated during this hearing. Ms. Mitrofan, during the hearing, one or more members of the Commission will be questions to you, and we ask you to answer them truthfully and completely. Your explanations are important to the Commission in verifying your financial and ethical integrity. During the hearing, interpretation between Romanian and English will be provided and therefore to allow accurate interpretation I would kindly ask you to speak clearly and slowly. As noted, the hearing, including your statements, are being recorded and the public parts of the hearing will be made available in both Romanian and English online within 24 hours after the in formulating our questions, we will take into account your privacy and, where required as possible, the privacy of your family members and close persons. So we will leave out any unnecessary details relating to, for example, ID numbers, bank account numbers, addresses of real estate, and the like. 
for the protection of your own privacy of course for you not sure to the same the answers. I will start with a brief overview of the procedural background of this evaluation and then will be followed by questions from members of the Commission. Here on, we'll start with asking questions followed by myself. We will try to keep our questions short and to the point, and we want to give a better answer to the short and to the point as well. The expected duration of this hearing is probably around an hour. At the end of the hearing, you will be given the opportunity to make a brief closing comment. It is, of course, for you yourself to decide whether or not you would like to make use of that opportunity. As a judge, you are of course familiar with the need to respect proper order of the proceedings and the Commission expects full respect of such order by all participants. According to the evaluation rules of the Commission, in the case of a violation of this order, the chairman is entitled to issue a warning and is required to exclude the candidate from the hearing. I hope and expect that there will be no need to make use of this power. On 8 July of this year, the Commission sent you a request for submission of the final declaration of assets and personal interests. On 14th of July, you submitted your final declaration. The Commission also asked you, asked all candidates, to voluntarily complete and submit the ethics of and you did so, and you submitted your ethics questionnaire on 30 June of this year. The Commission sent you two rounds of questions. The first one on 22nd of August, and the second on 6th September of this year. Your responses were submitted in time on the 26th of August and on 8th of September, respectively. You were asked a total number of 12 questions, consisting of 25 sub questions and 13 of the questions include a request for further documentation. You answer all questions and sub parts and produce documents in response to all our requests. The Commission appreciates the timeliness and completeness of your answers as this has facilitated our evaluation of tools considerably. I will now turn the here over to Mr. Fikali Miro to comment the question. In my turn, Madam Mitrofana would like to greet you too. I have a couple of questions to you with regards to the procurement of your apartment in Kishinev Municipality, Rishkain City District. Now a little bit for the context to have more clarity. In the period 2008-2014, your mother lived and worked in Israel. She's transferred regularly funds to the bank accounts that you owned. According to the information from the bank, you received from your mother through different transfers a total of 52,240 euros and $4,000. Uh, in your answers to the commission, you explained the source of the funds that your mother sent to you and provided a detailed confirmatory document, the work contracts of your mother as well. In addition to the answer that you provided to the commission, you've mentioned that the funds were transferred for you to buy an apartment and to also cover the costs associated with its renovation. On the 16th of July, 2012, you've purchased an apartment in Rishkan City District of Kishinev. According to the sales and purchase agreement, the value of the apartment was 256,428 lei. In addition to the written questions from the commission, you provided an answer according to which, well, you said that at the time of the procurement of the apartment, the apartment was not inhabitable. On that same day, however, there were several transactions on uh, your bank accounts. On one of them, one of, one of the accounts was a deposit account in euros, and therefore on the 16th uh, July 2012 to that, bank account there was an a cash inflow of 33000 euros about 513000 euros lay on the, the 17th july 2012 the balance was about 36000 euros 
on that same day, on the 16th of July 2012. On that date, you, you withdrew 36,000 euros, about 542,000 lei. You also had a deposit account in dollars on that same day, the 16th of July 2012. There was a withdrawal of $1,550, about 19,000 lei. And therefore, in total, on the 16th of July 2012, you debited from your bank accounts the amount of 561,000 lei. In your answers to the commission, you said that the total amount from your account on the 16th July 2012 represented the amount that you used to purchase the apartment in Kishinev Rashkan district, with the declared value of which, which was a bit more than 256,000, and the difference worth a bit more than 305,000 was used for the renovation of the apartment and for purchasing furniture. Now, the Commission would like to ask a few follow-up questions to gain more light and clarity around this matter. Now, the questions are, can you confirm that your mother lived and worked in Israel from 2008 to 2014? And did she transfer leg regularly funds to your bank accounts? Greetings, I have the opportunity to greet you all and to thank you for the opportunity to be the first one. It's an honor and a burden for me as well. Now, with regards to the question, I would like first to mention that both of my parents worked abroad. They left it back in 1994 and they returned home in 2014. So me and my sister, we grew up alone and all the money that was being transferred was used, well, starting with 2008, that is, because in the questions that you've asked, you so mentioned 2011, 2014, in the questions that you wrote to me, but you mentioned 2008 is when I graduated from, from a university, so that money was used for day-to-day -day maintenance. For the apartment, we indeed bought it in 2012. At that time, I wasn't a judge. And at that time, in general, in Moldova, the tax system, the asset declaration was not well structured and set up. It wasn't clear what to declare and where and when. And my parents have been working abroad for 20 years because they wanted to buy an apartment and they needed to also save some money to be able to return home completely. And they did so in 2014. On the, on the 16th of July 2012, my mother transferred to my accounts funds. So I had some accounts that I used to save money on when my mother would send me money. And I would deposit money on those accounts. And on uh, the day, because apartment was actually bought on the 17th of July, that is the next day. So uh, I withdrew these funds. We, we withdrew all the funds to use for the purchase of the apartment. It's true that it wasn't habitable. So if you look at the border crossing points from back then, you will see that at that time we traveled to, to Ukraine, to Movilo, to buy some basic furniture. We actually have a number of questions that we'd like to ask you around this matter. So I would like you to be very brief in your answers to the questions asked. Can you confirm this? Yes, obviously, I even pr provided a contract. I just wanted to say that my father was working in Israel too. Question number two, please confirm that these transfers of funds were meant to, to support you, to help you buy an apartment in Kishino. Yes, I confirm. Otherwise, my parents wouldn't have returned in 2014 home. Number three, please confirm that you purchased this uh, apartment on the 16th of July 2012 at the price that you declared of 256428 Yes, I mentioned it. I mentioned it in the declarations that I provided. Please confirm that you had two deposit bank accounts, one in euros and the other one in American dollars. Yes. Please confirm whether on the 16th of July 2012 from the euros deposit account there has been a withdrawal of 36,000 euros, about 542,000 a day. Obviously, we took out all the money. At that time, we didn't count it. As for the specific amount, I know it from the questions. But I confirm that before buying the apartment, we withdrew all the money for all expenses so that we didn't have, go, have to go back to the bank, which is about 36,000 euros. Yes. Next question. 
please confirm that on the 16th of July 2012 from your deposit bank account in dollars, in American dollars, there's been a withdrawal of funds worth $1,500, about 19,000 lei. Well, if the commission has this data from the bank, then I have nothing to say against it. Now, I don't remember very well. I mean, I do not doubt the veracity of this data. Okay, understood. Well, previously you've addressed this matter, but I would like to ask a follow-up question. You said in your answers that you sent to the commission, you said that this apartment was not habitable at the time of the procurement. What did you mean? I meant everything. And the bathroom, we didn't even have the pipes right. It's a two-room apartment in a Khrushchevka-type building. And I still live there. There was no toilet facilities, bathroom facilities. There was nothing in the kitchen. And we need to do to change all the pipes. And we need to put new wallpapers on the walls because it was in a bad condition. We had to renovate the veranda. And in addition to that, I must tell you that the people who renovated our bathroom did not do a good job with connecting the pipes. They uh, did it wrong, so we had to have it redone. We had to change the pipes again. That is to say, well, everything actually, the power cables and um, the cables were very old and we couldn't get proper light in. So we had to change all the... Uh, all this so these are details but if the commission would like to have any pictures from back then i can find them back at home are these all the matters that had to do with the apartment being uninhabitable so what, what it, was it in, in the that condition that you described it in i mean that what do you mean by condition i mean that in general, there was nothing there. There was nowhere to go to the toilet to. Like these basic utilities wasn't there, weren't there. So what did you have to do to make it habitable? We had to do well what we did. We renovated the bathroom, the toilet. We had to change the pipes twice, twice, and then the kitchen and all the pipes there, and then connection to power. And then we had to put new wallpapers on the walls and the ceilings. We had to paint them when we bought a bed. Out of your previous answers, it is my understanding that measures had to be taken as in renovation works. When did renovation works begin and when did you finish renovating? Now speaking in a timeline, since you bought it and then, well, we started, uh, well, Initially, what we did is that we went to Ukraine, to Movilo. We traveled there to buy a bed, a bed to some, have something to sleep on. And then we found some a team of people to do the works. And then practically we started immediately, but then it kept taking time. But the bathroom and the kitchen, the walls and the power connections, it took us two, two three months to, to renovate that, to fix that. As for the furniture and all the other matters, we keep working on that to this day. I just would like to have more certainty. The renovation started as soon as you bought it, right? And it took you about two, three months. Two, three months for the bathroom and the kitchen, as I mentioned, to make them more or less proper. And then, as I mentioned, the, the pipes were not connected properly. Then we had to have the job redone. And how much did that take? It uh, was until about January. Sorry, but can you tell me how many months it took? Because it's well, from July to January, about five months. So five months. You said you bought furniture from Ukraine. When was that? Now, the apartment was bought on the 17th of July. The 17th of July, the 17th actually, no, the 16th, because on the 16th, we withdrew the money, but we bought it on the 17th. So we immediately, July, August, we went there. If you look at the border crossing data, you will see one that happened, that we traveled to Ukraine and returned back on one and the same day. What was the total amount that you needed to cover renovation expenses? I do not have precise calculations. So I can just mention what was more expensive 
such as, for instance, uh, the pipes in the bathroom cost us about 20,000 lei initially. That was what we paid. That's from what I remember. Then the kitchen, 10,000 lei. We bought it from Ukraine. Now the bed, the closet, 18,000, about 10,000 for the bed. I don't remember very well all these details, these expenses, because uh, we didn't buy them all at once, but over a period of time. Let's focus on two categories. There is furniture procurement, where you paid more funds. And then we paid the crew who did the works 25,000 lei back then for the bathroom. The first time and then another 25,000 for the next, uh, the second time they fixed the pipes. If you were to make a summary for the renovations, like uh, an estimated amount, well, maybe about 15, 20,000 euros for the renovation works, for all the renovation. I never sat down to really do the maths because the money was transferred for renovations and then my sister lived in Soroka. I was supposed to send some money to her from, from those amounts. And if you look into the declarations uh, of my sister, she's also purchased an, a one-room apartment in Soroka at that time. And she was also working on, on renovating it. So I was older, my mother would send the money to me. And this was happening in a period of time in about 2011, 2012. Well, you said what is an estimated amount for the renovations, and previously you specified some amounts that you spent, that you, that you paid for the furniture. But I'm also speaking about the procurement of furniture. Do you have an estimated amount for that, or maybe a specific one? Look, I remember the bed was 10,000 back then. We needed a closet for the clothes, and that was a bespoke closet, 11,000 lei. 10,000 for the kitchen furniture. We also bought a kitchen sofa, 2,500 lei. And there was also a table with a sofa and another closet, um, about 4,000 lei from Ukraine. We bought it. And around March, the second year, we bought a bed and two armchairs. Because at the time, I thought my sister would come visiting and she needed to have a place to, to sleep. About 15,000, I think it was, that we paid. I don't remember. And then the lamps. Madam Mitrofan, can you tell us when did you actually move to that apartment? Actually, well, we've lived for so many years renting that we moved in the same day that we bought it. But then I took a leave. Uh, I went back to Soroka. From Soroka, I went to Movilo. Mo From Movilo, we brought the furniture and we hired the crew. So on the same day. But you said it was uninhabitable. Yes. You did not live back in the 90s in the countryside. Can you say that again, please? You didn't live in the countryside back in the 90s. I lived in the countryside with my parents abroad. I know what it's like to live there. Well, it's where I'm from too. Well, now, I guess in this regard, I might have a couple of questions. Why did you withdraw the entire amount of more than 5,000 lei be while you only needed 256,428 lei? And the remaining amount, 305,450 lei. We only needed it later. We didn't want to have to go to the bank too often. The queue was long. We waited for about three or four hours. That's how long it took us till the money, till the bank gave us the money. We, we knew we'd need the money for the renovation. And that was the purpose. Um, well, you mentioned the dollars and the lay and all that. There was some money from the wedding back in 2011. That's how big a wedding we had. So the money was particularly being collected, saved for the apartment. I didn't need those accounts once we... And that was happening back in 2012 when I was not even thinking about becoming a judge. Now, an uh, additional question in this regard, if you don't mind. Please explain the economic reasoning but behind extracting the entire more than 500,000 amount in lay. Considering that you had this deposit account, you had two deposits account accounts actually. But if you would have kept 
the money there on the account, then you would have had some additional income. It's now that I can ask myself these questions. But at that time, what was the annual interest rate? Six? Six percent? Then how much revenue would, would I have earned? How much income would I have earned in time? And then the money on those additional accounts that you mentioned. We had our wedding on the 3rd of September 2011. So if you look at the contracts that I signed, those are amounts, the 3,500 something my, my mom sent me, 5,000 lay, then there was a 19,000 that I think is dollars. That's a uh, deposit account with uh, money from the wedding that I was keeping there. And at that moment in time, we were not thinking about earning something out of keeping money in the bank. Our only goal was to get an apartment where we would live, where we're not thinking about any additional income whatsoever. Madame Mitrofani, thank you for the answers. Um, esteemed chairperson, no longer, I have no more questions in this regard. It was on the basis of the declaration filed with the custom service. But then if there was no sale purchase contract, what was the basis for this claim for the claim of this $48,000? Where did the figure of $48,000 come from? That was the amount paid by my husband when he bought the uh, car and it was on the basis of the customs declaration so there wasn't an agreement and we've looked for it at home and on the basis of the customs declaration there was the price that was paid for it uh, and the customs taxes actually were indeed what was it 28,862 yes my husband confirmed that was the amount because it was not me the one declaring at that time, but he told me it was that amount. Um, and, and, and you can also confirm that in your declarations to that he has since 2017, he consistently declared the value of the car to be 28,494. Yes, that was a... Uh... Yes, yes. 
Well, my question then, the following question is, where does the state of 28,000 come from? It was, it was neither the Toyota's price, it was neither the customs price. Uh, where does the state of come from? Those are true, me. Not 21, but 28. Well, if you pay attention, you will see that the amount declared in the customs was 48,000. 484. But the declared amount is 28,484. So it's a one digit error. And he was the one filling in the documentation. So he made a mistake. And we just imported the car with the declarations as they were. So it was just a typo and mistake. <laughs> I realized it when the Commission asked these questions, because we didn't have a contract. We registered the car. And did you since you found out about the technical error, did you do anything else? Did you go back to the media, for example, to correct it? Or have there been any follow-up? Yes, I did. Uh, No, because at the, at the time we were, well, now we're trying to sell this car. It's not operational since 2012. It hasn't passed the vehicle fitness test because it's, well, it's just not operable, technically speaking. And the value for sale, sales value was about 2,000. 2,000 euros, that is, about 20,000 lei, and yeah, the value is not changing. So we didn't even try. I mean, the, the, the car is parked right next to where we live. I have no further questions on this issue. I'm just going to confirm whether any of my colleagues have any questions. If that is not the case, then I would like to give you now a brief opportunity to make a closing comment. If you would like to, you feel free to do so. You don't have to. I would like to thank you again for this opportunity, for the opportunity to be the first. I understand this is also somewhat a burden. Everybody is watching us um, to gain the trust. What I would like to say that is when, that when I was answering these questions, I was feeling like, you know, like the commission should actually find the millionaires in the system, but they found me with this apartment that is 46 square meters. And I keep living there in this apartment with my two children. But I hope that this activity will turn out to be beneficial for us and for our society. I would like to mention that when I was writing the answers, I was feeling like I was confessing to a priest. However, I understand, I recognize this is the chance of the judiciary system to rehabilitate its image and to inspire to others trust and confidence because it's hard to work when everybody says that the system is corrupt, that the judges are corrupt, and it's not actually like that. And it was also somewhat strange because I had to explain where I had this apartment from. I grew up without parents for 20 years, but never did the government ask me how did I make it without my parents for 20 years. I would come back home and put the wood on fire to heat the house and we didn't have a washing machine and we were children. And at that time the government wouldn't ask us how we made it through, but now we have to sit and provide explanations. So it was quite interesting an endeavor. I wish you good luck in the future and I count on your fairness and objectivity of the Commission. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I also thank you for your cooperation this morning. Uh, we have now come to the end of the hearing. Um, I thank you for all your answers. Um, the Commission will now withdraw and uh, will have deliberations on your case. Uh, a recent decision will be delivered uh, later. And as much as possible, the Commission will strive at delivering the decision within a month after the date of this hearing. Uh, I declare this uh, hearing closed and thank you again. Thank you. <laughs>